there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. Alice and I, I just want to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're so blessed that you can be with us. <laughs> yes, we are. Across the airwaves of the internet. Uh, On the across other side continents. of the pond. Yes, we're, we're in England at the moment. So yes. wherever you are, we're just blessed that we can be together. Praise God. Even if it's without being face to face, which would I would much prefer. Amen. So ring us up and invite us to your house, and we'll see what we can do. All right. Um, we're continuing on in our look at the Sermon on the Mount as being the teaching of Jesus Christ, which is the definition of Christianity. Amen. Yes. Uh, I, I was just saying to a brother this morning, I wish that here in the UK, for example, every single church would do nothing for the next five years but teach the words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, and you would see something truly, truly miraculous happened. Absolutely. Right? So, but that's why we're in the Sermon on the Mount, is to learn the Word of God is profitable for training in righteousness, is what Paul wrote to Timothy. And that's our desire. We have been made righteous by the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross, but now we need to learn to bear the fruit of that righteousness Amen. in our daily lives. Amen. So that's what we're continuing on. And in the, in the past few studies... Mm -hmm. Um, we were looking at the fact that Jesus was teaching not about the outward actions of men, which can be disguised, mm -hmm. even from themselves or ourselves, and that's hypocrisy. Yes. He's teaching about what is in our hearts. Because okay? that's where he searches. That is what he searches. And you know, our, our time in the Word, I have a better idea. Let me pray. Amen. Father, I pray that, that, that this time that we have together, Lord, this time in your word, right. your word, which is a, a light and a lamp to guide us in where, the ways we should go in those paths of righteousness. Lord, that we would see more clearly your heart. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And Father, that we would be open to see our hearts more clearly. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you might change them to make them more and more like yours. Lord, use this time to bring us from glory to glory as you promised. Father, and I pray that you would use this time to truly conform us into the image of your Son, Christ Jesus, to make Him more like, make us more like Him. Thank you. Lord, we just praise you and thank you for your word and for this time that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, that's it. We're going to look at last, in our last program, mm -hmm. we talked about in Matthew chapter 6, and that's where we'll be today, in Matthew chapter 6, we were talking about Jesus doing teaching on when you give, all right? Yes. And not to be like the hypocrites. Now we're going to look at, he says, when you pray. We're going to talk about praying today. And I don't know that there's going to be a more important teaching in this series than, than this particular one. But before we start, there has to be a question. And the question has to be, what, what is, is prayer? prayer? Hmm. Now, that may sound like a simple question. Until you stop to think that, that it is true now as it was back in the time of Jesus that it's such an incredibly complex topic simply because of all of the bad teaching and the example, the bad example that was set by so many religious leaders, by others who, whose prayers were filled with and motivated by pride, and by the prayers of the Gentiles, which Jesus mentioned, right? right. So, you know, that was a very religious time. I, you know, I, I see these Gallup surveys and so forth and polls about how religious America is. 93% of people believe in God. We well, you know something, in the time of Jesus, everybody believed in God. And that's why his word would say, only the foolish say in their heart there is no God. The Romans believed in gods. Gods. They may have believed in the wrong ones. No, let me rephrase that. They did believe in the wrong ones. Yes, they did. But they could be very fervent in their belief in those wrong ones. All right? So, don't you think that they prayed? Why do you think they had all these temples all, the, all through Greece and Egypt, and Rome, you know, they, they were praying people, right. unfortunately praying to the wrong thing. Go look at Paul's message to the Athenians, and you'll see, he talked about how he had studied their objects of worship, right? right. So the deal is, we've been, we've been misinformed, yes. by and large, as we've been, been brought up in the natural, we've been misinformed. So this is kind of a, a continuation of Jesus saying, you have heard it said, but I say to you. Yes. The vast majority of prayer, 
if this sounds judgmental, I'm just going to stand on it because this has been my experience over the last four decades. The vast majority of prayer in the life of the cultural and nominal Christians today consists of what they had learned by rote and by tradition. Absolutely. Now, you know, I grew up a Roman Catholic. I know of what I speak, all right? We had yeah. prayer books. Well, <laughs> I, as, as do, you know, the Church of England, the Presbyterian Church, Methodist Church. I mean, that, that's what it's become. You know, uh, you know what rote means? If you were to look in the dictionary, as I did a little earlier, and I found this, Rote means that it's proceeding mechanically and repetitiously from memory without thought of the meaning in a mechanical way. That's what rote means, all right? Thought without meaning. Well, prayer is simply and most importantly conversation with God. Now, if you ever are you taking notes, please write that one down. You'll see the importance of this. Prayer is conversation with God, not to God. But with God, prayer is ongoing communications with the living God, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, our Father, and the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. That's what prayer is. This, I mean, it's so profound when you stop to think about it. You know, I was, we were talking about, I was doing a study the other day with somebody or, or with a group. And I was talking about the fact that uh, a number of years ago, we had come into England, as we've been doing for a long time. And we had come in by ship to Southampton, and we were on our way to London. Mm -hmm. And we stopped by Windsor Castle. Yes. Uh, Windsor Castle is one of the castles that is a residence of the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth. And at the time, her flag was flying, which is an indication that she was present. All right? She was home. She was home. Yes. She was there. Now, I, being an ambassador... For Christ, an ambassador of the kingdom of God, Amen. a far more powerful, wonderful, and longer lasting kingdom than that of Britannia. Yes. Yeah. I thought perhaps she'd invite me in for a cuppa. Mm -hmm. You know, say, would you like to come in and have tea and a biscuit? Well, she, of course, did not. But imagine, had I been her son, I mean, they probably would have seen me coming and swung the doors open, and I could have run right in, right, right into her presence and give her a big hug. You know, uh, sit down and chat. And sit down and have a chat. Yes, yes. Well, you know, in the, in the natural, you can't do that. Yeah. If you try to do that with Barack Hussein Obama, somebody's going to shoot you mm. between the gate and, you know, and the doors of the White House. You can't do that. But we have this confidence that we can go boldly before the throne of grace into the presence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. There's nothing preventing us. Nothing. And we can cry out, Abba, Father. Yes. Because of what Christ has accomplished on the cross. We are the children of God. Those of us being led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So that's what prayer is about. And it should excite you. It shouldn't be a chore. It shouldn't be a task. It shouldn't be something, okay, I'm going to set aside five minutes tomorrow or the day after tomorrow to do. It should be this ongoing conversation with a God who has demonstrated so powerfully his love for you. Because we want to hear what he has to say. Amen. So that's the what prayer is. Yes. It's just conversation with God. So here's the next question I have. Why? Why is prayer? Mm -hmm. um, the root of the word communicate. Because prayer is communication. That's what I just said, right? Prayer is mm -hmm. communication with right. God. Right. It's a Latin word which means to impart. Communicare. Right. Okay. okay. And what the Lord, it's about what the Lord wants to impart to us. We seem to have been convinced that we go before the Lord in prayer to communicate, to impart to Him what we, what want. we want and how He should accomplish it. Yeah, how to do it. How to, isn't that the truth? Yes, absolutely. Okay. But I want to tell you what the Lord wants to impart in us. Yes. Life. Amen. Life. Jesus said that he came that we would have life and have it abundantly, all right? All relationships, all, capital A, capital L, capital L, all relationships are built on communications. You and I have been saved because the Lord called us. He called us by name, hallelujah. Yes. The name that was written in the Lamb's Book of Life from before the foundations of the earth. 
All right. This, he, he called us. That's what, didn't that mean what Peter said? Yes. He has called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Yes. Jesus came to save that which was lost. So he can save that which was lost. He called us by name. That's communications. That's, that's the beginning of prayer. That's the beginning of our true life. And that's when you were born again, when you responded to that voice, that call from Jesus Christ. All right. So let's just look at this. And I, you know, I, this certainly may not be the most comprehensive list of things. Uh, and if you think of something better that I should include, write to me, yeah, yeah. office at BibleTalk.com, and send it to me. The first and primary purpose of prayer is to get us to listen to God. Amen. And it is not about changing God's mind, no. but to change our minds, mm -hmm. and more importantly, our hearts. Yes. That's, why we, that's why we speak with, communicate with the Lord. Now think about it. Is your prayer life about that? Is your prayer life about us going to hear what he has to say? Or do we go before him like little children? And we just have to, he, we have to make sure he hears what we have to say, what we think, what we want. He speaks with us that we might have faith. Yes. We pray to hear him speak to us because that's where faith comes from. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? He speaks to us in order to teach us, yes. to reprove us, to correct us, to train us in righteousness. And that's exactly what Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Right? He speaks with us to give us personal direction in and for our lives. He speaks with us so that, like Jesus, we will know what we're supposed to be saying. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 12. He didn't speak. Jesus didn't. Jesus, the king of kings, he didn't speak anything unless he had heard the Father say it, right? That's right. And what he spoke was blessing into the life of others as an example to us. Mm -hmm. I've been fixated in a lot of the teaching I've been doing over here in England and UK and Wales and well, here and there and everywhere about the Lord's Prayer that we're going to... You know, that's, that's what this study seems to be about, the Lord's Prayer. Well, it's not the Lord's Prayer at all. It was a model for prayer for the church. Mm -hmm. The Lord's Prayer was, not my will, but thy will be done. Okay? That's the example. What is the greatest? I just asked Alice this a little while ago. We had a Bible study with somebody this morning. And what's the greatest prayer? What's the greatest example of prayer that you've ever heard? The answer is simple. Jesus, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the shame, in the midst of the horror of the cross, he prayed this prayer, Father, forgive them. Yes. What he spoke was blessing. Blessing is almost inconceivable to us because had he not prayed that prayer, mm. where would we be? We'd have nothing. We'd have no hope. That's right. We wouldn't be here today joined in this we wouldn't be. The purpose of prayer is to speak blessing, to, to hear the blessings of God in our life, but to speak blessing into the lives of others. Mm -hmm. All right? You see, as Jesus states so emphatically here in what we're going to look at in, in the Gospel of Matthew, is that we don't need, we don't need to pray for our needs. No. And that frees us <clears throat> to pray for the needs of others, friend and foe, alike. I, I was, um, before we left the United States, I think it was back at the, around the beginning of the year, I was invited to speak at a, a church in Winter Park, Florida, where we have a lot of dear brothers and sisters, and the pastor is a dear brother of mine in the Lord. And he wasn't there that day, so he asked if I would come over and preach. And his, his wife got up in the beginning of the service and asked if People who had needs in the congregation would stand up and get, get prayed for for their needs. And I stood up and I said, I, I, I'd just like to ask you to hold off on that. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't pray for your needs right now until I've spoken. And I got up and what God put on my heart was I spoke about the fact we simply don't know our needs. We don't know our needs. We think, well, I need this and I need that. I need a job. I need a car. I need a this. I need a house. I need a... You know what you need? A closer walk with Jesus. Amen. 
That's the only need that you have in your life. Because when you have that closer walk with Jesus, when that is your heart, when that is what you are seeking, when Jesus is what you are seeking, what does it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all the rest will be added unto you. Huh. He knows what we need. Before you can think it, before you can ask it, you want to know something? He knows what you need long before you have a clue Exactly. What's good, what, what you need. He's already taken care of it. I, you know, if, if you're not familiar with the book that is a testimony of the accident that I had while Alice and I lived as missionaries in Central America, The Master's Call, mm -hmm. which is about a time that I was hit by a speeding semi-truck down in a very third world country. That's what it was, yes. Mm -hmm. Or developing country. It was a third world country. Very, very primitive in many ways. And I was hit while well, I was on foot by a speeding semi truck. Well, that book, The Master's Call, is about how God saw and met every single need that we had from the from the moment of the accident until until I returned to Belize not long after. Fixed up. Patched up. Patched up. God knows and meets those needs. He provided things in our life before we had a clue that there were going to be a need. Before we even thought of it. We didn't have insurance. I didn't have any insurance. So when I'm laying there in Central America, somebody thought, well, was he in the military? And yeah, you know, I flew in the Navy. And, and they made arrangements for the VA to take me in up in Florida. When we got there, Alice didn't have a place to stay. You know, we were always together in the hospital in Belize, such as it is or was, uh, she was able to stay right there in that hospital ward with me, the POW ward, yes. which was not prisoner of war, it was post-op ward, I found out, okay. Later. <laughs> but when we, got to, when we got to Florida, to the VA, you, you know, my wife couldn't stay with me in this room with one of the guys. But a woman walked in who lived about five minutes away, who had heard from a family member about the accident, and said, well, I live alone just five minutes away, and you're more than welcome. I have plenty of room for you to come stay. God provided. Yes, he did. We didn't even, before we knew that that was a need in our lives, God had already provided. Yes. Somebody had contacted her to let her know about that accident. Jesus. When I first went in, the prognosis was, well, I'd be in hospital for about a year, you know, recuperating, being whatever, hammered and whatever they do to fix you up. Well, uh, not long, maybe a little more than a month later, they were kicking me out of the hospital because my healing had been so miraculous. But we had no place to go. And I was still at that point in a wheelchair. And you couldn't, I couldn't go back down to the jungle that we lived in in a wheelchair. That doesn't work, I promise you. So a fella who was a family member of, of, of members of a church that I had pastored years before up in New York stopped by and said, you know what, my wife and I, we're going to... Hawaii to spend two months with my son. Here's the key to our house. A house, a beautiful house there, right on the water in Florida. Everything God provided. I mean, I can't begin Every here. Time. That's why I wrote a book. Mm -hmm. To tell you how God blessed us. We didn't have to pray for any of those. You know what we did? We praised him. Yes. We would praise we would God. see a need in our lives, we would begin to praise him, and mm -hmm. boom, there he was. He knows what you need. And he has promised in his word that he will supply all of your needs through his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And he never fails. <clears throat> so, he never fails. Prayer is conversation with the Lord. Yes. You had better know and understand mm -hmm. that the enemy, mm -hmm. that serpent of old, he desires to prevent those conversations between God and us. Because he wants to destroy God's work. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Isn't that what it says? Mm -hmm. So he wants to destroy your relationship with God. He can do it by destroying your prayer life. Jesus, on the other hand, said, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. I hope you heard him say that to you. And if you have, you have heard prayer from him, right? The, the, let me just say something about this, the communication. Mm -hmm. I think certainly one of the most exciting stories, accounts in the Bible, has to be the Tower of Babel. Right. 
and this, yeah, the, the Babylonians. The Babylonians are there. They're laying brick upon brick. They're doing all this. They're you know they're they're building this. But somebody was the architect of that. Mm -hmm. Any building that's built like that, I mean, it has to have a har an architect to yes. put the whole concept together. Mm -hmm. The architect was the devil. That's right. He he wanted to have them build a construction project that would be an abomination to God. That would bypass God. Yes. That would give them glory and pride and reach into heaven without God. So the Lord, in his infinite wisdom, could have easily sent angels down. Mm -hmm. Angels are they're not little girls in prom dresses, I promise you. They, he could have sent an angel down, and he could have just torn that thing apart. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Um, he could have sent fireballs mm -hmm. from heaven and destroyed that. He could have sent a mighty wind. But he didn't. He could have sent a mighty rushing wind and pushed it over, but he didn't. He could have shaken the earth from below Crumble. to destroy what men had planned. Because it's true. Don't you know? Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who build it. That's what it says in Psalm 127. Our God, in his infinite wisdom, destroyed their ability to communicate with one another. And they destroyed the tower. Yes. That's what it says. Because God, in his infinite wisdom, knows that when communications breaks down, whatever it is about mm. is doomed to failure. Doomed to failure. So many marriages today, so many businesses, so many churches today are destroyed by a lack of good communications. Yes. And you need to ponder that. You need to think about that. You need to meditate on that and think, you know, husband, are you communicating well with your wife? Wife, are you communicating with your husband? Parents, are you communicating with your children? All relationships are built and grow and nurtured by communications. Okay. Now that I've said that, I want to say, no, I want to repeat what the Apostle Paul said. I plagiarize a lot. Before you do that, I okay. was just thinking, with communication, commune, isn't that same together? Absolutely. It is the same root. That unity. Yeah. Our communications with God is what establishes our unity with God. Right. Our communications with one another is what builds us into a communicate, yes. a community, community, praying one for another, yes. which we're, we're supposed to do all the time. But you know, I've talked about what prayer is and why prayer is. But you have, to, you have to remember the words of Paul the Apostle yes. when he said, In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we should. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too Amen. deep for words. Yes. We don't know what to pray for. Mm. There are so many times. Yeah. And, and like I said, you know, that, that example I just gave of the sermon that I preached, everybody was ready to pray for something. And I got up and said, and I, I hadn't planned this, I didn't think it through. I mean, I just, boom, there it was. We don't know what to pray for so often. We're praying for this when we should be praying for that. Okay, I don't know what the this is. Like I said, it could be anything. It could be mm -hmm. a job, a home, anything. We could be praying for that. But what we truly need to be praying, first and foremost, is a closer walk with Him. Yes. To grow closer to Him. That's His desire, that He would grow us, mature us, nurture us. And build us up in our holy faith. All right? Then, if you don't have to pray for your own needs, because he knows them, and he's promised to meet them, and he watches over his word to perform it, as Jeremiah said, or God said to Jeremiah, <laughs> then you are free to pray for the needs of others. And that's what we should be doing. One for the other. But oftentimes... <clears throat> We're not to lean on our own understanding. Isn't that what it says in yes. Proverbs chapter 3? Yes, don't lean on your own understanding. If we don't know what to pray for somebody, I promise you the Holy Spirit does. Yes. God, who searches the heart, knows exactly what each one of us needs. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, He allows us to participate in the blessing of that person by our prayers. Yes. I mean, look at Paul's prayers. How often does the Apostle Paul, and I use him as an example, you can talk about Peter or anybody else, how often do you see them praying for what they need? I see Paul praying for the needs of others constantly. I mean, 
Look at John. I don't see John praying, oh God, give me this and give me that. Mm -hmm. But he was praying for Gaius. Mm -hmm. You see, but the Spirit of God told him what to pray. We need to be praying one for another. We should have a vibrant, vital prayer life. Yes. Because it is our ability, like Jesus hanging on that cross, that he was able to pray, look out, and pray a prayer that would have effect across all of the miles of the earth, across all of the years and ages of man, mm -hmm. and say, Father, forgive them. He knew what our need was. I promise you that. It's such a blessing to be able to pray for, for one another. You know, we, we have one of the things we have at Bible Talk is we have a, a prayer request line. Mm -hmm. We have people that have joined in with us to pray for, for things that come to us in our prayer requests. And we've seen amazing, amazing things. And not because, but it's not because of the goodness of our prayers. It's about the goodness of our God. But He allows us to participate. He allows us to be part of the blessing that He's giving and putting in people's lives. That should excite you. It, it really, really should excite you. But if you don't know what to pray for somebody, pray for them that they would have a closer walk with Jesus. Pray for them that they would have a greater knowledge of the Lord. Pray for them that they would have a greater knowledge of the Word. Like Paul, open the eyes of their hearts that they might see wonderful things in your Word, Lord. Pray for Alice. Pray for me. Pray for us that we would be faithful in fulfilling the ministry that God has called us to. That's my desire. That's my desire. And you want to know something? He has promised to meet that, that desire. More than a desire, it's a need. It is a need. Because I can't do any of this without him. Nothing. <laughs> well, it's true. Absolutely, it's true. We can do nothing without him. Well, all right. So in any event, I'm, you know, I, I have used most of the half hour. Oh, and... <laughs> I haven't gotten into the actual verses here yet, but we're going to next time, next program. I promise you that. And I promise you this. It will be healing to you. It will be life to you. It will bring joy to you. It will bring abundant life to you because it is the Word of God. It is what He is speaking to us. It is part of our prayer life between Him and me, Him and Alice, Him and and you. Thank you, Lord. So don't don't forget to be back next week, same time, same channel, and join us as we get into the Word, looking at His description of what prayer, I was going to say should be, what prayer must be yes. to be that effective communications. So Father, we do. We, yes. we thank You so much. We thank You that You do. You know every hair on our head, Lord God. You know us so much better. And Lord, that you have known us before the foundations of the earth, that you formed us in our mother's womb, and you fearfully and wonderfully made us, Lord God. You made us to be a people who would declare your praise. Lord, let that be what we voice. Let that be what we vocalize, Lord God, is our praise of you, because we trust in you, and we trust in your faithfulness and your love for us. We just bless your holy name, Father. We just thank you for the gifts that you pour out on us. But above all, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, until next time, may the Lord our God bless you, draw you closer and closer to Him. In Jesus' name. Bye-bye. So I cherish not Till my trophies at last.